Alhamdulillahi wa kafa Wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi Alladhi nastafa Khususan ala afdalihim Wa khatamin nabiyin Muhammadin al-amin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa ba'd Brother Chairman, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He ought to be praised. And we thank Him this day for making it possible for us to meet with you here in Kota da Mansara in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers. And in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. I left my home in the Caribbean island of Trinidad more than two months ago. And I have been continuously traveling one week in Caracas in Venezuela four days in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, and one month in Cape Town, South Africa, in which we conducted the second international Islamic retreat for using the Quran and the Ahadith to explain the reality of the world today. We had about 31 countries present, 200 participants, and we financed it with a shoestring budget. Nobody got a full plate of food. And then to Durban and Johannesburg and Pretoria and Petersburg. And then almost three weeks ago to Kuala Lumpur where I can't get enough sleep. So if I look tired and if I look sleepy, it's because I need a rest. <laughs> But while there is life, we must continue to teach with the hope and prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might accept our humble service and might forgive us our sins. Ameen. Our subject is entitled An Islamic View of the Current Arab Uprisings. We'll continue for half an hour and then pause for the adhan of uh, Salatul Isha and then continue again until we finish and then we have the Salatul Isha, is that alright? Yeah. Let us begin by praising our brothers and sisters in Egypt and in Tunisia and in other parts of the Arab world who have responded to prolonged oppression, prolonged suffering, prolonged tyranny, relentless war on Islam, by now rising up against their oppressors. to praise them and commend them for their courage and for the example which they set that others might follow their example and wherever in the world there is oppression the people might rise up courageously against the oppressor Having said that, we now recognize that those who rule the world are the greatest oppressors that mankind has ever witnessed. Having said that, we must also now recognize 
that the oppression seems to be centered on Islam and Muslims and that they are oppressing us and waging war on Islam for a particular reason. In our opinion they are doing that on behalf of the state of Israel. This subject is located in that branch of knowledge that is known as Akhir al-Zaman. In English it is called eschatology, eschatology. No one knows the subject of Akhir al-Zaman. No one can explain Akhir al-Zaman without the Quran. No. Only the Quran. And he who was sent to teach the Quran, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, only they can explain the world today. No one else can do it. And so it is time for us to return to the Qur'an and study the Qur'an. That the Qur'an might explain what is happening in the world today. For that, you need not only these eyes, <laughs> but you also need the internal eye. Not only the intellect, but you need nur. And nur is not sold in the stock market. Only from Allah it comes. And Allah knows the hearts of His servant. And be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers between a man and his heart. To study the Quran we also need the correct methodology. Otherwise you will not succeed. But tonight is not the night for us to teach methodology. We want to begin by saying that appearance and reality in many things connected with the world today are different from each other. And to say that appearance and reality in the Arab uprisings are also different from each other. The uprisings appear to be something positive for the Arabs. Freedom from oppression. <laughs> the reality, the reality is that Israel is smiling because conditions are now emerging which would facilitate Israel's pursuit of its ultimate agenda. Israel wants to rule the world and so when Europe said that all that we want to do is to find a home for the Jewish people, that's all. They told a lie. No. They didn't just want to find a home for the Jewish people. No, they wanted to create a state 
that would eventually rule the world. Why must Israel rule the world? The answer is located in the subject of Akhiru Zaman, Islamic eschatology. Israel must rule the world so that a man can emerge in Israel. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam described that man to us 1400 years ago. <laughs> and that man will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah, Al-Masih. And so he was called Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Dajjal who will claim to be the Messiah. You and I know that the true Messiah is the son of Mary, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And so this is a false Messiah. <laughs> But he was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by shaitan. And he was programmed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by shaitan. To impersonate the true Messiah. And the weapons that he uses are all evil. He's an evil being. Can Allah create evil? Can Allah create evil? Kul a'uzu bi rabbil falak Kul a'uzu bi rabbil falak Min? Min? Min sharri ma khalaq Yes Allah can create evil Where is that evil? It is Al Masihu Dajjal. But in order for Dajjal to fulfill his mission, he needs help. So Allah created from Banu Adam, from Banu Adam, from human beings, he created a people and gave to them a power so powerful they are that none but Allah can destroy them and these people also are wicked, wicked, wicked they tell monstrous lies <laughs> Like the one that just came out of Washington. Was it yesterday or earlier today? They are Ya'juj and Ma'juj or Gog and Magog. And they work with the Jal. And they commit Fasad. Fasad is not just a sin. It is a crime, criminal conduct, for which punishment is given here. And the hudud gives us different punishments, but the worst punishment of all is for fasad. And that's what they do. Fasad is that which corrupts and destroys. I am writing a book now on Dajjal but not getting enough time to write. It may take another year perhaps to finish that book. But I've, Alhamdulillah I have completed my book on an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. I think it is perhaps the only book in the market. 
it is not pride on my part. I am not being proud and arrogant and being disrespectful. When I say of much of the literature that I find on Gog and Magog today, worthy of Disneyland. And so we now, having looked at the appearance, the uprisings, as positive, now want to locate the reality. Why is Israel smiling? In what way do the Arab uprisings, which are not finished, benefit Israel? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam was asleep. The hadith is located in Sahih Bukhari. Uh, no, more than four times, more than four times in Sahih Bukhari. He was asleep at the house of his wife Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he saw in his sleep a vision. It was something terrible. And he woke up from his sleep and his face was flushed red. And he said, Wailul lil Arab, woe unto the Arabs. Min shurrin qadik taraba, because of a great evil which is now close. And then he raised his hands like this and he said, Today a hole has been made in the barrier bit by Zulkarnain. Hmm? Remember, Zulkarnain had bit that barrier with blocks of iron. And then he had poured molten copper on it. Where is this in the Quran? In, in Surah al Kafi. Yeah. And when that barrier was built, Gog and Magog could not penetrate, could not scale. So they were blocked by that barrier. The world was safe. But now, after Zulkarnain had bit the barrier, remember what he said. This barrier is constructed by divine kindness. For Izaja Awadu Rabbi, but when that time comes of which my Rabb has warned Akhir Zaman, Ja'alahu Dakka. Allah is going to bring down the barrier. When will it happen? It cannot happen until the last Prophet comes. It cannot happen until the last kitab is revealed. <laughs> so now, in the lifetime of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he says, today, a hole has been made in that barrier bit by Zulkarnay, meaning Allah is bringing down the barrier today, today, today. She then asked, Yani Zainab radiallahu ta'ala Shall we be destroyed? We the Arabs Because he said Wailul lil Arab Woe unto the Arabs She asked Will we be destroyed? We the Arabs When there are righteous people amongst us he said, Naam, yes, the Arabs will be destroyed. And then he gave us the time when that destruction will take place. He said, Either al Khabas. 
when moral nastiness prevails in the world. The world becomes so stink, you've got to close your nose. <laughs> That's the time when the Arabs will be destroyed. When pornography is everywhere, in every little corner, in every little shop. The destruction of the Arabs was something of which we were warned at an earlier time, long before Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. This coming destruction of the Arabs is not taking place yet, it's coming. And the Arab uprisings I am suggesting to you is preparing the way for that slaughter. For that slaughter. Thousands of years before Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam had a vision. And in that vision he saw himself sacrificing his own son. So he went to his son, Ismail alayhi salam, not his heart. And he said to him, Inni ara fil manami anni azbahuk. I have seen myself in a vision sacrificing you. The son of Fanzul Tara, son, how do you respond? The son replied and said, Ya Abati Fa'al Ma Tu'mar. Oh my father, go ahead and do as you have been commanded to do. Satajiduni Insha'Allahum Nasabirin. You will find me, Insha'Allah, patient. And then when Ibrahim alayhi salam placed his son's head on the block and was about to sacrifice him, Allah called out, Ya Ibrahim, Qad you have already fulfilled the vision. You have already accepted, accepted the sacrifice of your seed. It was not required of you to do this abiha. No. You have already fulfilled the vision. Qad sadaqta ru'ya. It is my opinion. And when I give my opinion, you should never accept it. No. Until you are convinced that it is correct. Remember that. Anytime I give my opinion, do not accept it unless you are convinced that it is correct. It is my opinion and Allah knows this. The that vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam is about to be fulfilled. The that vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam is what Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam also saw in a vision and said, Waylul lil Arab min sharrin qadik tarabah. The seed of Ismail alayhi salam, the Arabs. He said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, the best of those who have come from Ismail alayhi salam are the kinana and the best of those who have come from the kinana are the Quraysh 
And the best of those who have come from the Quraysh, Abu Hashim. And I am the best of Abu Hashim. Establishing that the Arabs are descended from Ismail alayhi salam. It seems that the sacrifice of the Arabs in the divine wisdom is part of a plan for Allah's purpose to be fulfilled for Banu Israel to be taken to the worst punishment that any people would ever get. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْكِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ And your Lord has announced that he is now going to send against them the Jal Bhagavad those who will inflict upon them until Yawmul Qiyamah the worst possible punishment but in order for that end to be achieved the sacrifice of the seed of Ibrahim alayhi salam is necessary in the divine wisdom this is my opinion you should not accept it until you are convinced that it is correct the prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that when the jal is released he live on earth for 40 days one day like a year one day like a month, one day like a week, and all his days like your days. Jerusalem in the Quran was written 10 years ago. Published right here in Malaysia. A Malay artist gave me this cover design. And you see the three blue circles representing a day like a year a day like a month, a day like a week. In this book, I have argued that the Dajjal was released in the lifetime of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He is on earth, but you cannot see him. Are there angels in this masjid? Can you see that? Are there jinn in this masjid? Can you see that? <laughs> so the jar is here in this world, but not in our world of space and time. You can't see him. I have argued that these three stages, a day like a year, a day like a month, a day like a week, these three stages produced three world orders. In stage one, a day like a year, the world experienced Pax Britannica, Britain ruling the world. And the sterling pound is the international currency. And Britain ruling the sea. And then came stage two, which is Pax Americana America ruling the world and the US dollar as the international currency and America ruling the sky and I've argued that Pax America cannot last forever it'll have to end 15 years ago I said the US dollar has to collapse where did I get that knowledge from? 
Because they laughed at me at that time, they're not laughing anymore now. I am not a prophet. <laughs> no. I didn't have some angel or jinn whispering to me. No. No. It was my analysis of the Quran and the Ahadith that led me to that conclusion. I came to the conclusion that we are now located at the time when America's time is coming to an end. Pax Americana is ending and a third ruling state will have to emerge to replace America and we now have Pax Judaica I call it Israel ruling the world and therefore we must have a new money to replace the US dollar they laughed at me but now the US dollar the last time I heard was in ICU ICU intensive care unit in the hospital and uh, it is likely within the next few months perhaps that the US government is going to demonetize the US dollar meaning it can no longer be used as legal tender you cannot use it to buy and sell and so they'll have to have something to replace the US dollar that replacement is already here I just realized it a couple of months ago <laughs> electronic money has already taken over the vast majority of the big money all the money transactions in the world are all electronic and the paper money used for only micro transactions so they're going to have to play, replace the paper money with something tangible I don't know what it's going to be but Israel controls the banking system in the world so Israel effectively controls money in the world and so Israel is now emerging as the third and last ruling state in the world we told you why Israel wants to rule the world we don't have to repeat that but in order for Israel to rule the world Israel will have to rule the Arabs because she's surrounded by the Arabs and this is where we come to the reality of the subject of an Islamic view of the current Arab uprisings I want to end this part of the topic by suggesting to you that no one no one can penetrate that reality other than those who approach, approach the subject from the perspective of Islamic eschatology and we are the only ones who have the Quran the destruction of the Arabs is part and parcel of the drama with which Israel will become the ruling state in the world and the sign that the time has come is when the world becomes filthy khabas but there's another timeline connected with Gog and Magog the Prophet said Islam, that when Gog and Magog are released the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee on the way to Jerusalem to the Arab world <laughs> and start to drink the water and by the time the last of them pass and therefore the slaughter of the Arabs is now at hand they will say there used to be water here what is the water level in the Sea of Galilee? answer the water level is now so low that the Sea of Galilee in the Holy Land 
is effectively dead, cannot be revived. Just waiting now to dry up. And so the time for the slaughter to take place has arrived, has arrived. Israel needs to control the Arab world. But there are too many Arabs. How can you control all those Arabs all around you? So many. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, that the Arabs will be wiped out by plague. Meaning, biological warfare. Did you hear about swine flu? And people put it on mask? You had it in KL? <laughs> you heard about H1N1? Well, these are signs of things to come. Biological warfare. And the Arabs are going to be wiped out. Prophecy of Prophet Muhammad wasalam. But Israel must also expand its territory, dramatical expansion. Why? Because someone rewrote the Torah with their own hands and said that the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt, the river Nile, to the river Euphrates. That is not true, that is false. But it is there in the Torah. So no Jew will accept the Jal as the Messiah unless and until Israel's territory expands to encompass this entire area from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. This portion means you've got to wage war on Egypt. You have to wage war on Egypt in order to expand your territory to the Nile. How are you going to wage war on Egypt? And the world recognizes you as an aggressor, an oppressor. That's not nice. Rather, you must wage war on Egypt and make it appear that you are fighting a terrorist state. Do I need to continue the lecture now? Or have you understood? Huh? I don't need to continue the lecture anymore. Make it appear that you are waging war against terrorism. That Egypt has become a terrorist state. Hmm? And that you have to defend yourself. Israel has to defend herself. And so now we can understand why the Egyptian armed forces acted in such a suspiciously docile way. The Egyptian armed forces acted suspiciously docile. Why? Because it's part of a plan. And now in the months to come we can expect that there will be free and fair elections. And guess what's going to happen? The Islamic parties are going to win the election, yeah. And the Islamic parties are going to form the government, yeah. And then Israel is going to smile even more. Because once the Islamic government comes to Egypt, what's going to happen with Gaza? Can you, can you imagine? The Islamic government in Egypt will have to support the Muslims of Gaza. Not only political support, but material support. And so Israel is going to say, 
these missiles now coming are from Egypt. <laughs> huh? And Egypt is becoming a state that is supporting terrorism because Hamas has been branded a terrorist organization. And so Israel will get what is known as causes better justification for waging war on Egypt. And when Israel wages that war, then the territory of the state of Israel will expand to reach the river Nile, which means that Israel will take control of the Suez Canal as well. And Israel also has to extend its territory to the river Euphrates, which means the whole of Iraq and Jordan in between. So it's quite convenient yeah, to have the United States in control of Iraq already. So now we're beginning to understand that what is happening in the Arab world is part of a big plan. And the big plan comes out of the Torah. The Torah. In order for Israel to wage that big war, against the Arabs and to expand its territory dramatically. Israel has to ensure that Muslims do not have any military capacity to threaten and to destroy Israel. There is only one weapon that Israel has reason to fear and that is nuclear weapons and the missile capacity to deliver a nuclear weapon and who has that? Only Pakistan only Pakistan so what they did 10 years ago and they may have put it on the drawing board 20 years ago what they did 10 years ago was to tell a big lie. No, 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 sorry, it's more than a big lie. Because there are three categories of lies. There are ordinary lies, and then there's the big lies, and then there's 9-11. 9-11 was crafted, crafted to give to give the Americans and the British and NATO and Israel the, the opening to destroy Pakistan's nuclear weapons. It's very convenient to have Afghanistan as a location. Some people in a cave in Afghanistan are the ones who send the aeroplanes to attack the World Trade Center. Huh? You believe that you have peanuts in your head. <laughs> so that they could, they could occupy Afghanistan. Afghanistan was not the target. No. Afghanistan is only the staging point for the target, which is Pakistan. And they've been waiting these last 10 years for the opportunity to move in and attack and destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons and denuclearize Pakistan. And they have a very important friend and ally supporting them in that struggle and it's the Pakistan Armed Forces. There are some people who have less than peanuts in their head who would have us believe that the Pakistan armed forces are the champions of Islam and these people are going to conquer India I don't know where they got that from Belong, belongs to Disneyland because the Pakistan armed forces have consistently been a friend of Israel consistently been a friend of Israel 
And tomorrow when this lecture is on YouTube, the Pakistani people are going to be listening to it. They attack Libya to assassinate the Libyan president. It's called state-sponsored terrorism. They say they have the green light from the UN Security Council. Russia says no. The rest of the world says no. If you have any any kind of integrity, you should all withdraw from the UN now. I think it is easier for Russia to withdraw from the UN than these puppets who rule over the Muslims today. So, they made a mess of it. They killed Gaddafi's son, an innocent man. And they killed his children, innocent children. They have blood on their hands. They are murderers. And yet the Pakistan armed forces, we still support them. Oh yeah. So now they need something to cover their shame. They need something to divert public attention from the colossal shame of what they did in Libya. So conveniently, Osama bin Laden said, well you can kill me now. How very convenient, eh? So that the attention of the world will be diverted from what happened in Libya. In order for Israel to wage the big wars, they have to take out Pakistan's nuclear weapons and nuclear plants. And they're just waiting for civil war to erupt in Pakistan. As soon as they get that excuse, they're going to move in. And when they destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons, the road will be clear for Israel to wage a big wars. As soon as those wars begin, you can say goodbye to Singapore. Oh yeah. They will have to break up Pakistan into bits and pieces to ensure that Pakistan never rises again as a nuclear power. So part of Pakistan going to India, another part going to the greater Afghanistan, another part becoming the independent state of Baluchistan, and the rump that remains under Indian hegemony. They don't like the government in Iran. They don't. Yes, it is a Shia government. You don't have to tell me that. I know it. But they don't like that government in Iran. And they want to do to Iran what they did to Afghanistan. So they can put a Karzai in charge of Iran. And that would be a truly, truly Shia government that they can then use and exploit for their own purposes against the Sunni world. They can't do it with this government because this government is sincere in its denunciation of Israel and its wickedness. This government in Iran is sincere in its support of the cause of the oppressed Palestinian people. To believe otherwise is sinful. So they will have to attack Iran and bring down this government as they did with Afghanistan and replace it with another government like Afghanistan, a Karzai government. And then we will see the fulfillment of the Hadith. The Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 Jews from Isfahan wearing the Persian shawls. Hmm? Once Pakistan's nuclear threat is removed, which should not be long from now, we can then expect the big wars to take place. Israel flexing her muscles, 
and uh, as a consequence of this both those big wars against the Arabs in particular we see the fulfillment of that vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam and this vision of Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam and the territory of Israel expands when you see the territory of Israel expanding who is doing it? it is Gog and Magog this is a book I wrote, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. It shows the Sea of Galilee, but the shore, it's an Egyptian girl who designed this for me. The shore is cracked up, indicating that the Sea of Galilee is drying up. This is the time. When we're going to find, as the Sea of Galilee is drying up, the big wars will take place and Israel will expand its territory and Israel will take over from the United States as a new ruling state in the world. When Israel wages those big wars against the Arabs, you're going to hear CNN and all the television stations, radio stations, clamoring that Islam is rising up. Islamic governments now are coming to power. Islam is rising up. And this is going to menace the world. Mankind is in great danger from Islam. These Muslims will slaughter everybody. The Muslims want to rule the world. That's a lie. You are the one who wants to rule the world, not us. <laughs> and so you're going to have this propaganda offensive. It's coming soon that Israel has to save the world from the menace of Islam. This is the reality of the Arab uprisings. The appearance was something positive, yes. But the reality is that it is beneficial for Israel to eventually fulfill its long planned mission of ruling the world and when Israel rules the world you know what will happen after that I want to leave time now for question and answers but before I do that let me end as I began the only reason that I was able to sit here and give this lecture tonight and explain to you the reality is because I have studied Islamic eschatology, the ilm of akhirul zaman. And if you do not do it, you will be a people who will not be able to understand what is happening in the world. Let me end by saying that the Quran has a magnificent role still to play in history. The Quran has a role to play that will dazzle the world. But for the Quran to pray to play that role, Allah has to choose from among our young men. Those will become the scholars of tomorrow when we are in the grave. Maybe one from Kota Damansa. But you're not going to reap, my son, unless you plant. You have to study the Quran. The books that I have written, this is Jerusalem in the Quran. This is an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. The most important surah of the Quran to teach you Akhiru Zaman. Is Surah Al-Kathir. It is. And this book is entitled 
Surat al kafi and the modern age. And so I urge you to read and to study the lectures I have delivered and that may Allah bless you to climb higher that Allah has allowed me to achieve. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka inta samir alim wa tawarina ya mulana inna ka inta tawar rahim bi rahmatika ya ahma rahmi. Ameen. The question is what is the role of China in the events which are now unfolding? Hmm? Uh, we said that Israel wants to rule the whole world. But the world is comprised of many people other than Hosni Mubarak who will bend down faster than anybody else to Israel. And General Parvez Musharraf who go down and even kiss Israel's shoes. There are those who will refuse to bow and bend. And most important of all is Russia. Russia will not bend to Israel. But the NATO alliance must force Russia to bend. And Russia will not bend. So you don't need a PhD in international relations to know that there is a major conflict coming. It is simple. And in that major conflict you're going to have thousands of nuclear weapons being used. But it is not only Russia that will not bend. China is proud of her civilization and China has every reason to be proud of her civilization. The Chinese in Singapore will bend down and kiss Israel's foot. But not China. No. China will not bend and bow. And China is a nuclear power. And so we can easily anticipate the Chinese-Russian alliance being restored and that Iran and Turkey will be part of that alliance. Because the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that you will make an alliance with Rum. Rum is not Rome, the capital of Italy. Nonsense. <laughs> Rum in the Quran is the Byzantine Empire. Rum. And the Byzantine Empire, which had its capital in Constantinople, has now been taken over by Russia, Eastern Orthodox Christianity. So the Prophet said, alayhi salatu waslam, that you will make an alliance with Rome. But probably this hadith never reached Pakistan, because they made the alliance with Washington. <laughs> When I speak like this, of course, the price I pay is that I cannot visit Pakistan anymore. I don't mind paying that price. I don't mind. And so we have a nuclear war coming up between the NATO alliance on one side and Russia and China on the other side. Hmm? They will mutually destroy each other. This book explains it as the Gog and Magog War. In order for Russia to have a fighting chance to win that war, the Russian Navy, the Russian Navy, nuclear-powered Navy, 
must have access to the Mediterranean Sea. <coughs> the only way that the Russian Navy can get access to the Mediterranean Sea is if they can pass through the Bosphorus. And the city of Istanbul is located on both sides of the Bosphorus. Istanbul used to be called Constantinople. Today Istanbul is a NATO city controlled by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But the Prophet وسلم, made a prophecy that you will conquer Constantinople. And he praised the Amir of that army and he praised that army. Ni'm al Jaish, Ni'm al Amir. I understand that prophecy to be located in Akhiru Zaman, not the previous, con previous conquest. And so I'm anticipating civil war in Turkey so that the Turkish people can liberate themselves from the control of the Turkish armed forces which are pro-Israel. And that that civil war will result in victory for Islam. And so NATO will lose its control over Constantinople. Once that happens, the Russian fleet can now enter the Mediterranean. And so nuclear powered submarines and ships passing through the Bosphorus into the Mediterranean. China is also a nuclear power. And China also has submarines and ships that are nuclear armed. And that's where the Chinese are now building a naval port. Do you know? China is building a naval port on the southern tip of Sri Lanka. So you're going to have the Russian Navy coming from the north and the Chinese Navy coming from the south. So this is going to be a war that will be a little bit even, more evenly balanced. Yeah. When I said 50 years from now, Nabi Isa Ali will come back 50 years from now. Oh, they beat me up. <laughs> they beat me up in New York. So I changed it. I said, children now at school should live to see it. And nobody beat me up anymore. <laughs> so I don't, I don't say 50 anymore. I said, children now at school should live to see it. <laughs> yeah. uh, when we give time frame, we're only making plausible guesswork. We can be wrong. Fifteen years ago, I was saying fifty years. So now I should be saying about thirty-five. But others, my students are saying to me, Sheikh, you're wrong. It's less than that. <laughs> it's less than that. They could be right. It could be less than thirty-five. But it's not three hundred and fifty years. The young man is saying that Pakistan is a, an ally of China. No. No. That's just a minor insurance policy that they bought. <laughs> Pakistan is most firmly an ally of Israel. And when a last punishment comes, it's going to be terrible. Yeah. The question is, can we relate events that are occurring in many parts of the Muslim world, including Malaysia, with the fitna of Gog and Magog. Actually the word is not fitna, it's more facade than fitna. Oh yes, the facade of Gog and Magog is multidimensional. Oh yes, there is political oppression. It's part of the agenda of Gog and Magog. There is economic oppression. 
your daughter you know you know your daughter she's Indonesian she's also my daughter and you should see the tears coming from her eyes our daughters are in Singapore serving the Jal as domestic servants and being paid the salary of a dog our daughters she paid three hundred dollars a month here she's paid six hundred ringgits a month would any Singaporean girl work for that wage now don't come to me with the argument but when she takes the three hundred dollars to Indonesia it's a lot of money because justice demands that you be paid the wage of the market in which you are working not the wage of another market so don't make the mistake is there any Singaporean girl who will work for that wage and do that job? Come on, Lee Kuai Yun, answer me. With all the studies you did in Harvard, <laughs> making Singapore the model state. The answer is no. No. That's oppression. Would any Malaysian girl work for that wage in Malaysia, do the same work? The answer is no. That's oppression. So you are oppressing my daughter. When men are oppressed, Allah's anger is terrible. Can you imagine what it must be like up there when women are oppressed? Can you imagine what kind of anger there is over there when children are oppressed? That oppression is around the world today. Gog and Magog and the Jal. I'll tell you the result. In Surah Al Isra, Allah tells us what He's going to do to the oppressors and to those who choose to continue to reside amongst the oppressors in their cities. He says in Surah Al-Isra وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا ذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا This is آخِرُ الزَّمَان You cannot understand this ayah except in the context of آخِرُ الزَّمَان and there is not a single town or city that will not be destroyed. Surah to Israel, Allah will destroy them all. And those who escape destruction will be punished with terrible punishment. And this is something inscribed in the book. So the study of Gog and Magog and their economic oppression, their monetary oppression with this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money. The oppression that comes now from Islamic banks who say that they engage in halal transactions but in effect in their so-called murabaha, they're lending money on interest but disguising it as a sale. I call it backdoor riba. If you differ with me, no problem. No problem. We differ. Okay? You have your opinion, I have mine. You see, Sheikh Imran is wrong. But if you come after me with boxing gloves to attempt to demonize me and to prevent me from preaching and teaching, well then I have an answer for you. I will show patience and patience and patience. 
until patience is no more. And I'll say, come. Come, Islamic Bank. Come, let us both pray to Allah and ask Allah to curse and to punish with the greatest possible punishment. Whosoever from amongst us is wrong on this issue. War comes and Israel wages wars to expand her territory. What's going to happen to Saudi Arabia? Okay. This is my opinion. I believe that those who rewrote the Torah to say that the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates, they did so because the Jews lived in Egypt for 400 years. Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam lived in Egypt. Nabi Musa alayhi salam lived in Egypt. Nabi Harun alayhi salam lived in Egypt. And the Egypt that they live with, not the whole of Egypt, Misr in the Quran refers to the eastern delta from the river Nile to the Red Sea. That is Misr, not the whole of Egypt. So they are saying this is a part of the Holy Land. The river Euphrates because the Jews were taken into exile in Babylon. And they lived there for hundreds of years. So they say that is also a part of the Holy Land. But the Jews also lived in Medina. Oh yes. So although it's not there in the Torah, it is not far-fetched for us to say that there's going to be attack, an attack on Medina. And so something is going have to have to happen in Saudi Arabia. For the Jews to say of Saudi Arabia that it is now rising and turning into a terrorist state. Yeah. That he is asking about is very important for us to memorize. The dua has come with different versions. You can memorize anyone. They are all in Sahih Bukhari. Allahumma inni A'uzu bika min azab al-qabr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with thee from the punishment of the grave. Let me pause there and tell you one of the punishments of the grave. If you have not had your dinner so far, I suggest don't have any dinner tonight. In Surah Al-Zumar, Allah says that he takes the souls at the time of Maut. But for those for whom Maut is not yet ordained, he takes their souls while they are sleeping. For yumsikullati qada alayha al-maut. And when he takes their souls while they are sleeping, he then keeps those souls for whom Maut is written. And he returns the other souls for a period of time that is prescribed. But during that time, when the soul has been taken and not yet returned, there is no way to tell that that person is still alive. That all the medical evidence would show no sign of life. So if Allah wants to punish you with one of the punishments of the grave, He can do this to you. He can take your soul and people will believe that you are dead. And they will wash your body. And they will clothe your body. And they will perform the Salatul Janazah. And they will bury you and they will forget to put a cell phone down there. And after they have left the grave, 
then Allah will return your soul to you. So it will be as though you woke up from sleep. But when you wake up from sleep, the place is dark. No light. So you call out to your wife. What happened? But no answer. You tend to get up, you can't get up. You're confused. This place is dark. And I am in an enclosed space. Can't get up. And I'm smelling this comfort. What's going on here? And then you begin to feel the cloth. But I didn't go to sleep in this clothes. What is this? What is this? What is this? Slowly, slowly, slowly. You will come to the horrible realization. That you are in the grave. This is worse than an earthquake. Worse. Because this is your grave. You've been buried alive. Now the tears will come. Now you want to make Toba. <laughs> but the time for Toba is gone. <laughs> so Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min azab al qabr. O Allah, I seek refuge with thee from the punishment of the grave. And from the punishment of the fire, fire of Jahannam. And I seek refuge with thee from the fitna, the test and trials of living and of dying. On fitna till Masih Dajjal and from the fitna of Dajjal the false Messiah. This dua should be recited in Salat before the Salams, the last thing before the Salams.